Hello everyone. It's good to be together again, if only virtually. Uh, my thanks to Father Tom O'Neill for being a trusty videographer of these garden chats now and uh, before of our fireside chats. Last time uh, I shared with you uh, an important moment uh, in the Gospels, and that is where Jesus asks the disciples, who do you say that I am? First he asks them, who do people say that I am? Then uh, he asks them directly, who do you say that I am? That's an important question for us to ponder, to reflect on, and to answer. And that will change uh, from time to time, from circumstance to circumstance in our life as we uh, get insight, get hints of understanding some dimension of who Jesus is uh, for us in our life. And then I said that uh, in the theater, there are two ways that characters reveal who they are, through their words and through their actions. Uh, Characters can equivocate with words. We call that a lie. But it's very difficult to sustain uh, physical lies. In a sense, the body, the actions don't lie. They reveal us, they convict us. So uh, today I'd like to do the first of a couple of garden chats with you on the words that Jesus used, specifically the parables that Jesus used. When Jesus was trying to communicate who he, he was, who this, or what this kingdom of God was about, he told people stories and he drew on the images that were around him, that he grew up with. Parables tell a story using something we see every day to help us understand a spiritual truth that we can't see with our eyes. When Jesus taught in parables during his life on earth, during his ministry, he used things that the people of his day were familiar with. Sheep, goats, yeast, s farmers sowing seeds, uh, coins that are lost, and on and on. Uh, there might, uh, if, if Jesus were here teaching with parables today, they would probably be different because our culture is different. There might be fewer stories about farming and about sheep herding and more stories, for instance, about computers. Now, the Gospel of Luke contains both the largest total number of parables, 24, and 18 of those 24 you will only find in Luke's Gospel. They don't appear in the other Gospels. The Gospel of Matthew contains 23 parables and 11 of those 23 are unique to Matthew's gospel. You'll only find them in Matthew's gospel. And the gospel of Mark contains eight parables of which only two are unique. So today I want to look at just one parable from the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, it's about, it's a parable about many things. Parables are multivalent. They don't just have one meaning. Allegor in allegories, there's only one meaning equivalent to each element or character in the story. Parables, like good stories, have many meanings. You can't exhaust them. So when Jesus tells a story, and uh, as in uh, Matthew's gospel, the, the disciples come up afterwards and say, uh, 
you know, you, you, why do you teach in parables? What does that mean? And then he goes through and he tells them what they mean. Well, we're pretty sure that that was not uh, what Jesus said or did because good storytellers don't explain their story. If you said, well, what exactly did that story mean? The storyteller, if he or she was a good storyteller, would probably say, well, I can't answer that, but I can tell you another story. And then they would tell another story that shed a different type of light on that spiritual reality that they were trying to communicate. So um, today, I want to take a look at a parable uh, from Matthew's gospel that appears in the 13th chapter. Now, it also appears in Mark's gospel and Luke's gospel in a slightly different way. But we're going to use the parable as it appears in Matthew. And here's how it goes. It's, it's short. A sower, a farmer, a sower went out to sow. And some of the seed that the sower sowed fell on the path, the footpath. And the birds of the air came and ate it up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground. And they, because of a lack of depth in the soil, withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. But finally other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. So. In this parable, there are a number of uh, different ways we could approach that. So, for instance, in this parable of the sower and the seed, there are four types of soil, four kinds of soil. There's uh, the footpath, there's the rocky ground, there's the thorns, the ground that has thorns, and then there's good soil. It, it does, uh, when I ponder this parable, I, I wonder how often the sower has done this. If he's sowing seed on a footpath, if he's sowing seed in rocky ground where it's not gonna really be able to take root and grow fully, if he throws it among uh, thorns. And then finally, a quarter of the seed gets thrown on good soil where it does produce a I don't think that character would be able to stay in the farming uh, business very long. So something more is going on, something more. And if we take a look at, uh, could, we could take a look at that and say, you know, if the seed is the word of God and it's planted in us, what, what's the equivalent of the footpath or the path? in the ways that we receive it? Or when are we like rocky ground? Or uh, when, are, when are we filled with thorns that just choke uh, this, uh, the fruit of this grain when it starts to come up? And when are we good, fertile soil where the uh, seed is going to flourish and grow? So you might consider who are the characters in this story. Obviously we have a farmer or a sower. We have plenty of seed. We have a footpath. We have rocky ground. We have thorns. We have good soil. So I invite you to ponder what those four types of soil represent and have represented in your life. When are the times that God's word or God's love has fallen on you as a footpath? And the birds of the air, whatever they represent, come and gobble it up. 
When are the times that God's word or God's love, God's grace has been sowed in you and you were rocky ground? Tough, tough to get a shovel in. You weren't open to that. When are the times that God's word has been sown in you when you were filled with thorns that choked any possible harvest? Hmm? What do what do those thorns represent for you? What are those worries or cares that keep you from hearing or allowing the love of God, the grace of God to take deep root in your life? And what are those times when you're good soil, when you're open to what the sower is sowing and you yield a harvest? I think these days when we shelter in place, these days when things slow down a bit, they give us an opportunity, really a gift, a grace to reflect on some of these beautiful stories that Jesus told that are meant to help us in our faith journey. Um, I want to I, I want to just uh, finish by sharing um, two uh, brief poems. The second one's a prayer by Steve Garnis Holm. So here's how his first one goes. It's called Sower. Failure, 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 grace. God is the soil, sower and you are the soil. The word finds its fertile places and it grows in you. God is the sower and you are the seed. You are given to the world. Though it may seem fruitless, there will be a rich harvest. You are the sower and love is the seed. Though it seems wasted, love will bear fruit. Be patient and trust. So that was by Steve Garnis Holmes. This is another take by uh, the poet Steve Garnis Holmes and it's called Sewing. The candle doesn't trouble itself with the journey of light. The bird doesn't care who hears. Beloved, you waste many seeds. You offer kindness unnoticed. You try 70 times to forgive and fail. And those you forgive don't repent. You love the undeserving and unappreciative. You try and try to get close to me, yet feel no closer. Your prayers fall on rocky ground. My child, how much of my grace do you suppose falls among thorns. Beloved, it is the mystery of your faith that you cannot know the life of the seed you sow, how far away, how much later, in whose unseen heart your love bears fruit. 30, 60, a hundredfold. Do not measure. Do not judge. So light. So light. So until next time when we'll look at a parable from the Gospel of Luke. Stay grateful. Stay hopeful. And especially stay safe. God bless you all.